Hey, hello everyone and welcome to the beginning of the last days. It's not going to be the apocalypse until 2025, so says Martin Armstrong, who's coming right on uh, up with me today. And I know you guys love him. You do not want to miss this. Uh, he has got lots of good takes on what is going on in the world and it it is a little bit crazy, isn't it? But hey, Socrates, uh, Armstrong's computer says 2025 eh, might be tough. I don't know. What do you think? I Apparently, this computer knows a lot. So you know I love to open my dad's Bible because this book knows a lot. And my dad, uh, he loved to, um, to underline and mark. And so I open it up today. And guess what? You know we've got all this stuff happening with China and Russia and the Ukraine. We're going to talk to uh, Mr. Armstrong uh, about that. But... Um, Let's have a look. My dad, I open it up, and it's kind of shocking. So I open it up to uh, Jeremiah 6.22, and it says, Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people comes from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. <sighs> I don't know what that means. So I am kind of thinking that uh, there's always been someone in the north that is coming. And so we've got a problem. I hope that we have peace and I hope we don't have world war because it seems like we're getting kind of close to it. Let me tell you about my guest because he knows a lot more than I do about all of this. Uh, Martin Armstrong is an American self-taught economic forecaster and has been announced as one of the most famous people alive. And uh, Armstrong Economics offers a unique perspective intended to educate the general public and organizations on the underlying trends within the global economic and political environment. Our mission is to research historical cyclical patterns and market behavior in timing, price, and crisis to better understand and identify potential future trends using an extensive monetary database and advanced proprietary models. So we welcome you, Martin Armstrong. Thank you very much for gracing us with uh, your time today. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. So the world's heating up. Um, tell us about Socrates, uh, just for those who don't actually know. You have this computer, and hasn't it already predicted some amazing things, and it seems to be accurate, and we don't quite know how? Well, I mean, I... <clears throat> I was a programmer from, you know, basically from a teenager. And so I understood, you know, AI and, and things of that nature. And I was involved with that back in the 1970s. Uh, <clears throat> so as a hedge fund manager, I saw how capital would move. And yeah, that's, well, that's not quite AI, but uh, <clears throat> we were looking at basically how capital moved and like in the 80s we were all there in in geneva that's dealing with the opec money and then the, the money flows and everything was moving to japan and that that peaked out in 89 and i began to see really that capital moved around the world uh and so did the talent and i would recommend you know you can read it online for free basically herbert hoover's memoirs uh, and look at chapter of 1931, and he was describing the same thing, that capital acted on a, like a cannon on the deck of a ship uh, that was loose and shooting off in every which direction so fast they couldn't figure out where it was going. Uh, so Socrates basically <clears throat> uh, began with just putting in absolutely every market in the world and letting it... Uh, ascertain where everything was moving and uh, I, I came across we had a client Universal Bank of Lebanon and they had found a, a book that had effectively somebody read, wrote down <clears throat> the Lebanese pound back into the 19th century and asked if we could create a model I said sure and they sent it over we put it in and the computer came out and said in eight days their country was going to fall apart I thought something was wrong with the data. And I called them. I said, look, something's got to be messed up here. And they very calmly asked me that, well, what currency would you recommend? And eight days later, the, the Civil War began. Uh, the same thing happened with the Iran-Iraq War. Uh, the same thing happened with the collapse of Russia. Um, 
you know, there I had given a, a, a seminar in London in June of 98 and said, look, Russia is going to collapse. And I give it about 30 days. And that turned it out to be the long term capital management crisis and everything else. And, you know, but the London Financial Times had snuck in the back room and ended up putting our forecast on the front page. So then everybody kind of blamed us for it. But um, uh, <clears throat> essentially, if you know you're going to invade something, you're going to move your money in advance. And like I've warned that if China was really going to go to war with the United States, they're obviously going to sell off all the U.S. debt in advance. Uh, you're not going to hold the 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 debt and buying debt from the person you're, you know, against in war. So, I mean, it's, it's human nature, really. So Socrates is just able to monitor absolutely everything in the world. You know, it doesn't get tired at night, you know, and uh, <laughs> that's, that's really what it does. And, and it has been remarkable. Um, actually, even <clears throat> I was surprised, but the the one major media that actually called about our forecast because you know we had put out in 2013 that uh the war was going to start in ukraine a year in advance and said that's where world war three will will begin and the only major media that actually called about that forecast was russian today they said you forecast this was all going to start a year in advance. I said, you know, that's what the computer came up with. <laughs> um, <clears throat> mainstream media in the West, they don't want to hear it. You know, they basically want to keep, you know, get they get their marching orders from a central command, you know. And um, <clears throat> I had published out on our blog and, and about six or seven months ago, and I said, look, our sources from... Um, or saying that 100,000 Ukrainian soldiers are already dead. Immediately people were, oh, that, you're just putting out Russian propaganda. And then <clears throat> what happened was the head of the EU actually came out and said that. And then Zelensky made her take it out. But, I mean, our sources now are saying that over 200,000 have died. And uh, that's why they're in their, like, sixth recruitment, their drafting people from 16 years old up to 60 years old. I mean, it, Ukraine is losing, and that they want to keep per, pretending that Russia is losing so that people keep sending money and they're willing to fight for Ukraine, etc. Uh, this is all just, you know, what happens in war is the first thing, the first victim is always truth. Both sides will lie all the time to support whatever they're doing. I'm. I'm really have to deal with. Right, right, and I, I'm so shocked that so many Republicans are actually supportive of this, uh, you know, mission in helping the Ukraine because this guy's a pretty crazy guy. I mean, uh, Zelensky comes off. You know, he's always got his like hoodies on uh, to meet the president. That was weird. And then, you know, he's always down dressed. Like, oh, I'm super cool guy. Used to be an actor, and now, you know, pr played a, a president in a movie, and now I'm. I'm the president, but um, he has done very terrible things. He's shut down churches. Uh, he is not really for freedom. And I, I'm in shock that the there's such a lack of discernment. But of course, this entire last three years has shown us the lack of discernment in the world. Well, <clears throat> Zelensky is just getting his marching orders from for the West. I mean, there are Ukrainians that are beginning to realize that he is destroying their country. And he's just going to have a golden parachute and the U.S. will send the plane. When the last man falls, he'll be off to his house in Miami. Um, you know, he's, he's basically just destroying his own country and he doesn't care. Uh, you know, in, in any war you want to look at, World War I, World War II, whatever, you'll find that the number of civilian deaths usually are twice as many as as the army uh and nobody wants to talk about that you know but you know the the carnage in in ukraine against civilians this is absurd and you have you know biden's secretary of state actually coming out and saying there'll be no peace talks whatsoever we're not giving up any land as if this is his country 
Um, I mean, this is all a proxy war against Russia, period. They blew up the, the pipeline. And you have to understand, the neocons, uh, from the very beginning, when the, when the trade agreement was signed in 1958 for gas from Russia to, to Germany, they were against it all the way. They put in sanctions that nobody was allowed to give pipe to Russia to, to complete the pipeline. Uh, they have sanctioned everything. Biden put in sanctions on Russian gas in 2017, 2019, and 2020, all before the Ukrainian war. The Ukrainian war has just been the excuse. Um, and this has been an objective all along. And you, you have to understand the neocons. And <clears throat> I'm doing a report uh, on them. But they have this crazy theory. They're, they're not much different than Karl Marx. Marx thought that communism, we can take over the whole world and everybody will you know, have utopia. They think, and they, they call it democracy, but we don't live in a democracy. Um, <clears throat> and they like proposed that going into Iraq and will free the people from Saddam Hussein and they'll, they act as if they'll get, you know, a ticker tape parade and, and thanked and more civilians died afterwards. And, and they, you know, Tony Blair even came out and you can Google that his apology and explains we didn't really have the, the, uh, you know, the intelligence was all wrong and they misjudged what would happen afterwards. Um, you know, so many civilians died in sectarial wars. You had ISIS coming in. I mean, it, this is all crazy. Uh, and they're doing the same thing again with Russia. <clears throat> you, you know, they keep telling themselves that Putin's this dictator, blah, blah, blah. And we go in there and the Russian people will, will cheer. And they're not. I mean, this is just absurd. Do you think that we're we're really being pushed into a, a major war. Uh, when you say that uh, Zelensky is sort of destroying his country, well, Biden's destroying his country. Trudeau is destroying our country. Uh, like this seems to be what, you know, a global uh, agenda. Yes. I mean, if you look at um, <clears throat> Klaus Schwab's uh, points, all right, and <clears throat> He even says in there in, in his eight forecast that democracy uh, has, is no longer valid. We'll retain our rights. But, you know, ever since Trump was elected <clears throat> and you can look on our site, we put in there a, an opinion piece from the London Financial Times uh, from Davos. They were all upset because suddenly they realized that people could vote them out of power. And that's when all of a sudden democracy suddenly became populism, evil populism. And ever since uh, 2016, this agenda to eliminate democracy so these people don't lose power. And that's really what this is about. And, <clears throat> you know, they say we live in a democracy, but we do not. Do they, anybody comes and say, you know, we have a right to vote. Shall we go to war or not? No, they just do that. They draft people, send us over to die, and nobody has a right to object to any of this. That's not democracy. That's a dictatorship. And they want to, you know, pretend that <clears throat> the same thing with, they go, oh, this is a democracy against authoritarianism. Why? Because, oh, Putin is elected by, the, by their parliament. Well, so is the head of the EU. They don't stand for election. So is Trudeau. <laughs> I mean, uh, you don't vote for the head of of, 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 of any of these countries, China or, or Japan or whatever. The United States does. But a parliamentary system, the party votes for whoever they want to lead their party. The people have no say in that. The head of the EU is appointed by the other heads of of. The member states, they don't stand for election ever. So I don't see where we, you know, we have this this pretend propaganda that we live in a democracy when we do not. Right. They, they decide what they want. And that's why, in all honesty, that's why, you know, <clears throat> Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon. 
um, you know, the, the real true story of that, it was a major debt crisis. We had, he's the one that revised the, the calendar. Why? Because the high priest used to put in the days for leap days. So they would bribe him. So when Caesar crossed the Rubicon, basically, according to the calendar, it should have been winter, but it was really summer. I mean, it was that messed up. So that's why we have the Julian calendar. Uh, he went in and standardized everything to eliminate bribing the high priest. I mean, that's how bad it was. And I, I wonder with this big divide that's happening, if that's why uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene um, is calling for a national divorce. She said, I'd like to play this clip and then get your perspective on that. In my life, in my world, I all of my friends are regular Americans. Everyone I talk to is sick and tired and fed up of being bullied by the left, abused by the left, and disrespected by the left. And our ideas, our policies, our ways of life have become so far apart that it's just coming to that point. And the last thing I ever want to see in America is a civil war. Um, no one wants that, at least everyone I know would never want that. But it's going that direction, and we have to do something about it. We're also a nation, a crumbling nation. We're a nation in distress. Our government is in complete failure, over $34 trillion. We are on the verge of default, and we have to do something about that. But that was the right and the left that did that to the American people on their own. But the Democrats never stop pushing their policies, their ideas, and their culture on Republicans and the right. And we are so sick and tired of it. We are tired of our children being taught ideas and ideologies in school that we do not want our children taught, like gender lies. We do not want our children um, being having their gender change or transitioned. We, we can't even have women's sports and privacy in our bathrooms, and women in prison can't even have spaces. ESG, environmental social governance, has completely taken over corporations, and this is a huge policy pressed on private businesses through the government from Democrats. If you're a white male today in the financial industry, you can forget it. You're a dinosaur. You're going extinct. No one should ever be hired by their skin color or their gender or, or Marjorie, how they identify. It should only be about your character and your ability to do the job. Okay, I'm not sure if you could hear that. Were you able to hear that? No, I couldn't. Okay, <laughs> so basically all the same thing. She's saying the the left has brought in all of this woke stuff. They've destroyed the country, thirty four trillion dollars in um in in debt and on the verge of default. That the white male is now you know basically you know everybody's against the white male. So there's all of this, you know. It's completely racist against the white people. And uh, there was this young boy that was talking about that early this morning. I saw a video of it. It was just amazing. He's a young kid, and he, see, he quit his school. He actually said, I'm leaving because you are racist against me. And, uh, and then she's also talking about, you know, the gender wars, that we don't want our kids taught all of this gender nonsense, and you're just destroying the country with all of your, your crazy, unscientific nonsense. We're done. We want a divorce from it. Well, I mean, my assistant was telling me that some 31-year-old guy was walking around naked in, in the girls' locker room and says, well, he identifies as a woman today. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just getting to be completely crazy. I mean, uh, as I saw a joke that says Ohio is identifying as a province of Ukraine to get money now. <laughs> 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 oh, that's awesome. Unlimited money. That, that right. un unlimited money. Unlimited money. Exactly. So all of this is creating inner turmoil in the United States and in Canada as well. We've got the same basic problems going on now, sometimes a little bit of a different flavor, but yet it's still happening. All of it's still happening. And the whole world seems like on a destruction course and we're heading towards this nuclear war. And, and it is actually quite terrifying. And Biden, um, I mean, we just we know he's senile and it's sad and evident. And I don't know how his family can tolerate him being put out in front of the cameras. It's so embarrassing. Well, you know, this is the, he's the perfect candidate for them. He just signs whatever they stick in front of him and he just reads from the, from the cue cards. That's it. Um, whether he even understands what he's saying is, is, is questionable. Yeah, you but can see the fear in people's eyes when he starts going off on his own. You know, he starts giving some comment. You can see like, 
I, you can see everyone's eyes just a little bit stressed on who knows what he's going to say. You know, and he's, uh, he, he has all kinds of different stories that are verifiably not true. I mean, he's just talking nonsense. Look, this, this is, he's the perfect president for them. That's what they wanted. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, they, they went out of their way to make sure that they remove Trump. Uh, because mainly Trump was <clears throat> against war. Uh, and, you know, as you know, I've, I've met probably just about every, you know, head of state around. I, I went to, um, to dinner at Trump's Mar-a-Lago back in March of 2020 when he was president. And that's when he actually said, which impressed me, he said that, uh, he wanted to withdraw the troops from Afghanistan. He said he was sick and tired of writing letters to their uh, parents of dead soldiers to say they died for God and country. And he said, he says, what are they dying for? What are we there for? They've been fighting over borders for thousands of years. What difference are we going to make? And the neocons immediately, like Bolton came out, oh, this is outrageous. All they ever want is war. That's it. Uh, and... <clears throat> Kennedy was against war. They took him out. Um, Johnson immediately took us into Vietnam. And you can even Google it. There was um, Project Northwoods. It, it's on Wikipedia. Uh, it's been declassified. They actually wanted to kill Americans and blame it on, on Castro to justify uh, innovation. And Kennedy said, no way. Uh, so they took him out. They took Trump out. Anybody that's against war, they get rid of. Uh, and, you know, it, it's just it's just too coincidental. And, and this is these neocons. I'm, I'm telling you that it, their idea, it doesn't matter if <clears throat> uh, Russia changed, the communism failed. They didn't change their policies. Um, it, when... <clears throat> Uh, Reagan wanted to meet with uh, Gorbachev, and they were they all were against it. They said, "No way, you can't trust him." Blah blah blah, everything else. And Reagan said, "No, I am going to go talk." And <clears throat> without that, you know, Russia wouldn't. You know, basically, it collapsed. The USSR collapsed. Uh, the Berlin Wall came down. I mean. You follow their advice and nothing ever changes, uh, you know, other it's than we get war. Sad. And, and, and kind of shocking. I mean, who wants war? We all have children. We, we have lives and families and businesses and, and, and we don't want, like a, a normal person doesn't want all of this war and we don't want to lose our children for no good reason, you know? And it is very sad. It's, it's tragic. Uh, some some veterans now saying this is not what we fought for. You know, this is not what my grandfather fought for. It's uh, it's really shocking. Um, and I lost most of my high school friends to Vietnam. I mean, um, I have one fellow that works for me that was in Vietnam, and he's just exactly what you're saying. You know, <clears throat> the tapes have come out from Johnson saying, well, for all I know, they were shooting at whales that night. We were never attacked. Um, you can Google that, you know, FDR, uh, he put in sanctions on Japan and he did everything he could to get Japan to attack Pearl Harbor. Uh, and he had broke the code. <clears throat> there was a big Senate investigation on this. Did he know in advance? They just concluded, well, you know, we're not sure, you know, FDR knew ahead of time. Uh, he created World War, you know, that's how he got us into World War II. You look at the Lusitania, the same thing. Germany put out an ad saying they're using this to, to sneak arms to uh, Britain. And the U.S. said, oh, absolutely, that's ridiculous. They sank it, and now divers have found it, and it was loaded with arms. They have lied about everything. You, you, you take Iraq, uh, weapons of mass destruction, um, there isn't one war that I can find that they ever, you know, told the truth about other than maybe the civil war that we had and, and also the American Revolution. Other than that, no. I've been so shocked about uh, the information coming out about the 
FBI or CIA being involved with the death of JFK, um, that must shatter Americans' trust in, in all of these people. You know, it's, they are um, what we call the deep state. I mean, these people will, they, they have an agenda and they do not want um, to be, you know, diverted and they will do whatever they, they can. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> um, they were supposed to release information on the JFK uh, and <clears throat> assassination they told Trump, look, uh, because of COVID, we need more time. So he gave them more time, he, they said, after the election. Uh, and he said, okay, fine. They knew he wouldn't win. They had that all rigged. And as soon as Biden comes in, he gives them an indefinite extension. I mean, uh, you know, this is just the way it is. It's, you know, these people are against us, actually. Um and they have this agenda, and this is what, what always comes down. And you have people like Klaus Schwab with his vision of, of authoritarianism, and he's pushed this you know, all, all around the world. Right. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to check with JT just to see, is, uh, are, is it okay to talk about the uh, January 6th on these platforms, or should we say goodbye? Because there's a couple more heavy topics, kind of. Sh should we just say goodbye? Yeah, okay. Um, we are going to just continue this conversation, but uh, to YouTube and Facebook, we wish you a fond farewell. Please go to uh, Rumble right now. We have lots of people watching on there. That is a great place for you to interact. Um, we just want to be respectful of the parameters of YouTube and Facebook because we don't want to lose our channels. But uh, we do want to speak the truth. And so the, also the, the link to Rumble is right in the chat of YouTube. Um, so uh, it's kind of funny because 